now want to introduce our president, Becky Watkins, and she has a special presentation to make that we're very proud of. Would you please welcome Becky Watkins. I mean, I mean, well, this is separate from the political part, but we wanted to honor you for becoming an American citizen. We're so proud of you, and I know the rest of the story, uh, and I'm, I am particularly proud of you and Jenny and what your family has done and how you've come to Whitman, Mississippi, and made contribute so much to our community. We were able to contact the, uh, Washington and had want to present you with a flag that has flown over the White House in a memorandum box with a, with a um, seal of the medallion of the United States of America. And we would like to present this to you at this time. city in Italy and pretty soon they'll all be over here <laughs> and Mississippi will be the capital of fantastic Italian food. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of what it is, but you cause a traffic jam on Main Street. This is, this is bad. <clears throat> One of the Alvin told me, said, well, all you got to do is tell them we're going to put in parking meters. And I said, yeah, that's, that's what I need to do. Uh, but I'm proud and I'm happy and the, the amazing thing to me is that the candidates seem to be a lot younger and better looking. Uh, I couldn't compete against some of these people, but I'm mighty proud of Clark County. I'm mighty proud of people who are willing to step up and go for an elected office, because it is not an easy job. Some of you have it, you know. And so I'm very respectful and appreciative of that. And Memo, you're special to me. You'll be special to Quibbon in Clark County for the rest of time. We have the highest per capita churches in the city. We have the highest per capita banks in the city. We have the highest per capita of restaurants in the city. And we are the home of Mimos. supervisor is uh, very simple. We need to continue what we're doing uh, and try to continue to invest in this community. We have too many students today that are graduating that are moving away to find other jobs other places. And uh, so we've got to continue to build on what's already being done. I think our infrastructure is getting better by the day, but I think we've got to continue to do that. Uh, and so I think we need to continue to have leadership uh, that's willing to do what it takes to get things done. Now, one thing I want you to keep in mind is the population in Clark County has continuously declined. Uh, in 2002, according to the United States Census Bureau, uh, Clark County's population was 17,690 people. Um, as of 2017, the estimated population by the Census Bureau was 15,828. That is over 1,800 less people in Clark County now than it was in 2002. Now the question is, is why? I can tell you probably why is because they're moving to places where they're getting higher paying jobs. I'm asking you now to humbly elect me. August the 6th is the primary and allow me to go into the general election so that I can represent you, the people of Clark County and District 3. Thank you. Clark County's got a lot of good people. But Clark County's got a battle with what pretty much every other county in the state of Mississippi does and around the surrounding states. The, the hardest thing for Clark County to me is, and other places too, is economic development. You know, we'd love to say, well, I'm going to go make a phone call and I'm going to get somebody to replace Burlington Industries down there like so many people in Clark County work for, for a while. But I really think the supervisors, Troy's here, I think he did a good job. None of the ones running for supervisor have any ex experience as a supervisor. Uh, I think we all have our strong points. I know de dealing with being athletic director, 
I dealt with fixed assets, transportation. I was in logistics in the Air Force and have a, a, a good bit of experience with the budgets, athletic budgets, the logistics, taking care of the infrastructure. Obviously, I've been here 55 years and didn't choose to leave. So I love Clark County. I, I, I will work hard and do the very best I can. Appreciate the, the opportunity to speak to you and uh, ask for your support and uh, look forward to seeing you in the future. Thank you. Knowledge I've obtained through my previous employment has helped prepare me for a position of circuit clerk. If elected, I will not only run my office with integrity and accountability, I will also be discreet and respectful to parties involved with sensitive issues. One of my first goals will be to get circuit clerk's office back in compliance with the state audit department. I will also follow their recommendations on making daily deposits and monthly settlements of fine and restitution money. I will work diligently with the court personnel to make circuit court run smoothly and efficiently. I will work closely with the election commissioners to help keep voter rolls up to date and to do my part to help elections go smooth. The circuit clerk job is a big job and an important job. I would like to thank each of you for coming out tonight. I'd ask for your support and your vote. Um, it's my understanding in the history of Clark County there's never been a Republican circuit clerk. So with y'all's help and support, maybe we can make history and I can become the first Republican circuit clerk. Again, I'm Brad Gibson and I ask for your vote and support. I was appointed by Governor Bryant to be your next district attorney. Bill Lair retired after 31 years as the district attorney for this district. We cover Clark, Lauderdale, Kemper, and Wayne County, so it's a pretty large district. It's a four county district. And I'll we'll, be on your ballot in November. What I'm really excited about is the opportunity to serve you and tell you about things that we're doing different. So we're taking what Bill Lair's had and all the things that he already had up and running, and we're trying to make it more progressive. One thing is that in, um, at the beginning of this year, we started the very first pre-trial diversion program that we've ever had in the 10th district pre-trial diversion program does, is it takes people either right after they've been indicted or they can waive indictment. They're monitored by people in our office. They're drug tested. They pay their restitution. I heard um, Brad mention, you know, making sure that we get timely restitution. If you've ever been the victim of a property crime, what you want more than anything is your property back or your money back, right? You want to be made whole for the financial loss that you had. And so that gives us an opportunity to avoid some of the backlog we see in the circuit court log and immediately put people on a payment plan. They're also being monitored. They're gonna have to have a job. They're gonna be drug tested. And so there will be some consequences that go there as well as supervision. Now, as your district attorney, my focus will also be on making sure that people that do need to be in jail are in jail. I would urge you and encourage you to talk to your local law enforcement. Um, I think that one of the best things that we can do, one of the best things that y'all can do, all of us can do is to support our local law enforcement, to make sure that we're giving them the tools that they need and that we're giving them the encouragement and the prayers that they need. So I am asking for your vote in November. I'm asking for your support as you go back into your communities and I'm asking for your prayers as we make it. Um, Kemper to Wayne County is a big district. It's a lot of people, and November is a long way away. So I appreciate the opportunity, Chandler. Thank you for inviting, and I appreciate the chance to speak with you. I look forward to answering any questions that you might have when we get finished. Thank you. Bubby Johnston cares about Clark and Lauderdale counties and the great state of Mississippi. It is my opinion that all the areas I've touched on tonight are interrelated and bring about changes in East Mississippi area and will produce better pay and more jobs. And I know you care as well. And you want only the best for District 33 and the Magnolia State. But no one can solve problems working alone. Our campaign theme says it best, working together for a better Mississippi. Let's make it happen. Thanks very much, enjoy your evening, and remember to vote for Bubby Johnston for State Senate District 33 Republican primary on August the 6th, Tuesday, August the 6th, 2019. Thanks again, everybody. Appreciate it. You know, it's, there's, there is economic development issues that we have here that we've got to address, and there's so much opportunity 
elsewhere, but there is there is opportunity here that's just not being tapped into, and that's what I want to address. So for the last 10 years, I have worked in government as well, on the county level. I was an election commissioner for 10 years, was elected in 2008. Mr. Mangum, he was uh, he was there during that race. We had a good time. We were like younger back then. Things were different then. But um, because of that, I have a relationship with supervisors, with our circuit clerks, uh, with constables, sheriffs. Uh, and because of that, I understand that on the state level, there are sometimes shifting of funds that create unfunded mandates on the county level. And uh, Mr. Troy, you probably you know about that. And so I want you to know that if elected, that would be one of the things that I understand is that Sometimes there are burdens of unfunded mandates, Mr. Eddie, you probably know about that, that I want to be able to talk to the boots on the ground, whether it be the mayors, the aldermen, the supervisors, the sheriffs, the constables, that I'll be there to talk to them, always be available, and understand that you really need to talk to those people that will be involved. So I've been in government, I've been in business, I understand both, and so because of that I want to take the, that knowledge, those sets of skills, apply them in Jackson, and help change things here in East Mississippi. So with that being said, I would really appreciate your vote on August 6th, Republican. Thank you. I've been a supervisor for you for two terms. I have eight years of being running for a being a supervisor in Clark County. Everybody says, well, what do you, what you want to change for? What do you want to do? Why are you, why are you giving up your supervisor job? Supervisors, you see a lot of things handed down in Jackson. I'd like to be a voice in before they get to your county level. When they get to the county level, you got to deal with it. You're going to have to raise taxes, or you're going to have to, whatever it takes, you got to, it's, it's in your lap. Infrastructure's been a big thing in Clark County for the last a couple of years. Uh, this last session they've had, we've had two, two infrastructure bills come through. Out of them infrastructure bills, Clark County, we did the packets on them, Clark County got $2,680,000 out of that. That's monies that come from the state, from the big oil spills and different things, but it's come from the state and handed to us that we can replace just two bridges. That's how expensive it is for bridges to be replaced. <coughs> to represent Clark County, you've got to vote for those infrastructure people. You've got to, you've got to get that money and put it to good use. Uh, next, the big thing is, is education. Education is a hot topic. Uh, uh, it's, it's not only just education, it's our state jobs. I don't think anybody here that wants to go to work and work in a place 10 years or better and never get a pay increase. I mean, that's just a fact of life. Everybody wants to go to work. They want to do a good job, but they need support. There's other ways that other states are giving us support. You got to think outside the box, but we're number 47 out of 50 states in teachers pay. That's kind of bad, it's embarrassing. It's time for us to step up to the plate, do what we can, look outside the box, and there's a way to get our teachers paid. And there's a way to get our state employees some more money. Last but not least, I'm here to hit just the hard points, economic development. I feel like Clark County's been left out. Uh, we're not, we don't have the population to back up. When they do the studies, and they hunt jobs. Mayor, what we got? We got three major employers in our county. DART, probably the biggest. You got your oil field workers, and you got your school systems. Other than that, people that want to live in Clark County, but they have to travel across our county lines to get jobs. It's a fact. It's what it is. We need to be able to but when somebody like Lauder County needs a little help in their industrial park to finish it, to maybe get some more jobs, we're a bedroom community to our other. We'll travel 15 minutes. We'll travel 30 minutes to go to work. 
we need to help them out as much as we can too. When they get a bill, we need to vote for them as well. Come August the 6th, I'm your voice for the working man and woman in Clark and Jasper and Newton County. I do, I do my best to vote them for you and to keep us in a good standing right here in Clark County. Thank y'all. It's been an honor and a privilege for me to serve uh, District 84, Clark Newton and Jasper County for the last, this is eight, the eighth year. Uh, infrastructure needs are rampant. Education needs by teachers are rampant. Job creations are rampant. I'm gonna give you just a brief summary of uh, things we've done this particular session that are uh, somewhat special to me, Heartbeat Bill. I'm, I'm a pro-lifer and uh, I'm gonna go down that way as a pro-lifer. You know, I'm, I'm for abolishing it. You just wanna get right down to it. Uh, human trafficking, uh, that bill is passed where uh, our, our young people are getting trafficked for uh, sex. Uh, we, we address that. One of the things for, for all of us that live in rural Mississippi is rural broadband. You know, we, we passed a rural broadband bill to allow the co-ops of Mississippi to offer internet service and broadband service to our rural customers. Whether that transpires with EMEPA or not is yet to be determined. We gave the authorization to all 26 co-ops to do that. Uh, infrastructure needs, I think it was related that uh, we had a couple of, uh, of opportunities for infrastructure. And let me just say, I voted against the, the big bond bill. The big bond bill was in the, in the special session of $500 million. $500 million. The state bond indebtedness is $4.9 billion. $4.9 billion is what we owe in bonds. So you hear a lot of times at the national level how much how many trillions the uh, federal government's in debt. Well, Mississippi's in debt at 4.9 billion. Our budget is 6 billion, if that tells you anything. We just appropriated some money to pay off some bond indebtedness of uh, 385 million. 385 million that we could have went to teachers or, or employees, Troy, that uh, hadn't had a raise in the last 10 or 12 years, but we've spent it on something else. I think the bond package is coming tomorrow. It's probably gonna be in excess of $300 million. Now, I can tell you now, there's 300 million. I don't really care if there's 10 projects in Clark County. Uh, I'm gonna support the project, but I'm not voting for the 300 plus million more. In, in debt. Uh, I think at any moment in any county or municipality that I represent, uh, have I not been very respondent to requests for letters of recommendation. Mayor Fulton is here from the City of Quitman. I think every time uh, he's asked, you've gotten it. I think Enterprise actually asked for, for one or two. I think in the latest thing, uh, Becky asked for some grant of some description. You get it pretty quick, Becky, same day. That's the way I operate. You, you call with a problem, I, I pretty much address the issue right away. So it's, uh, it's been my honor and privilege to represent uh, Newton, Clark, and Jasper County over the last eight years. I'm asking for your vote in the Republican primary on August the 6th. Vote for you, Michelle. Thanks. District. That includes Clark, Clark County, Lauderdale County, Wayne, and Kemper County. I was appointed by Governor Bryant on November the 1st of last year. I've been serving as the district attorney since then. We're at the Republican um, gathering here in Quitman, and I just spoke earlier to the group. Well, first of all, I certainly asked for their vote. I want to tell them that I am the most qualified candidate. I have 15 years of experience 
as a prosecutor. I've been involved with law enforcement for 20 years. I'm a big supporter of law enforcement. I want to see stronger prosecutions, safer communities for all four of our counties. So, hands down, I think you'll see that I have the proven experience and the integrity to do the job of district attorney. Okay, again, I'm Bubby Johnston. I'm running for uh, the State Senate, District 33, Clark and Lauderdale Counties. And uh, we had a great evening here tonight and I discussed some of the main issues that I continue to talk about, which is public education and economic development, workforce development, uh, the roads and bridges, uh, uh, our state parks, which are so vital to this area. And uh, it's just, we got so, so many opportunities here. We just want to work and, and try to help this area grow and pos prosper as best we can. Uh, this is home for us. Some people know I'm from Forest. I uh, lived in Forest for 62 years, but uh, the last four years have been in Clark County. I love it here. Uh, my wife is a former Janet Harris, who's from Quitman. This is home. We're not going anywhere. We have the time, the energy, the passion to serve this area and our state to the best of our ability. And we're looking forward to uh, winning this race on August the 6th and uh, continue to do all we can for Clark and Lauderdale counties. I'm one of the people, you know, I was in the communication business. I, I worked for 28 years at East Central Community College in Decatur. I was uh, director of public information, then vice president for public information. I was an administrator. Uh, part of our, our duties was dealing with media, working with media. So communication is a big deal uh, for me. And uh, when people contact me, I can I can promise you I will reply as soon as possible, either through cell phone or email. Or, and that's the whole thing about it. We all have to work together uh, if we want to improve our area and our state. Uh, cooperation is a big deal for me. Communication and cooperation, and that's how you make things happen. I'm Jeff Tate, candidate for District 33 State Senate, running Republican. We're here at Mimos and Whitman. We had a great uh, Clark County Women Republicans meeting. We're able to see a lot of candidates here. There's a lot of enthusiasm here on the Republican Party side. Uh, it looks like no matter the outcome of each of these races, we're going to have a good slate of candidates come November, and we look forward to November. We're also looking forward to August, so we just want to ask everybody for their vote. August 6th, vote Jeff Tate, Republican. As a father of two, I have two children, a three-year-old and a two-year-old, and that is the reason why I'm running. I want them to be able to have a career, a successful career, here in East Mississippi, here in Lauderdale or Clark County. I don't want them to have to move off. And so because of that, I've been talking with people around the community. We have some ideas of what we can do as far as workforce development, helping strengthen our medical field, because that's such a vital part of both Lauderdale and Clark County that has to be addressed and to make it where there's more opportunities here so they don't have to move off to have a successful career, which is my main goal, is that they have a successful career. And what that'll do is that'll just simply pour out to everybody else here in East Mississippi as well. My name is Greg Mangum. Um, I'm an alderman in town of Stonewall. I'm here tonight at the uh, Clark County Republican Party meeting with the Republican women here at Mimos and Quitman. And uh, I'm a candidate for Supervisor District 3 here in Clark County, uh, running for the space uh, that's being vacated by Troy Smith, who's running for District 84. And uh, just uh, basically tonight, we're just out here uh, being able to give our platform to the, to the voters here and share why we think that we deserve their vote uh, in the August uh, 6th upcoming primary. We have a Facebook page, uh, Mango for Supervisor on Facebook. Um, they can go and like our page. And we, we always uh, respond to any kind of messages we get pretty regular. So. Well, my name is William. Shirley. Uh, we're at the Clark County uh, Republican Candidate uh, Forum, if you will. I serve in the Mississippi Legislature for District 84 uh, for the last eight years, Newton, Clark, and Jasper County. And uh, it's been an honor and a privilege for me to serve in the Mississippi Legislature for the last eight years. Uh, the Speaker of the House has entrusted me with one of 32 members. Five of us were chosen to be uh, vice chairman, and so for the last eight years I've been a vice chairman. I appreciate the opportunity. It's been a humbling experience for me to serve in the Mississippi House, and I'm asking for those votes on August the 6th in the Republican primary to vote for me, Shirley Jr. I have a, a, a social media page, uh, Representative William Shirley on uh, Facebook, uh, William and Benita uh, Shirley on Facebook. My cell number is on there. My email address to the, the capital is, is, is 
online and my office number at the Capitol is on there as well. I have enjoyed the opportunity. I used a quote tonight, two different quotes. One is uh, from Sarah Thomas, first female NFL official from Pascagoula. Do things uh, because you love it. And I love serving the people of, of East Central Mississippi and District 84 and Clark Newton and Jasper County. I want to represent the people and be their voice in Jackson. Thanks. Hey, I'm Brad Gibson. I'm running for circuit clerk in Clark County. I just want to get out and ask everybody for their support, for their vote in, uh, in November, you know, so we can get in the office and make some changes. I'd like to uh, try to get the office uh, in compliance with the state audit department on some issues that we've been having, uh, bring in some good changes so maybe we can uh, help the county move forward. Now, we'll be going door to door just to talk to the people, but I'm going to let people ask me for signs because I know a lot of times it puts people on the spot whenever you ask me to put a sign because it's just some people are uncomfortable with that, so I don't want to make people uncomfortable. So if anybody wants a sign, all they got to do is let me know, and I'll be glad to bring it to them. Thank you for your time. My main platform is the same thing I said at the fire department the other day. You know, it's, uh, it's, we got infrastructure issues, uh, the way uh, infrastructure is, uh, is vote on. We, 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 got, we got money from bridge money. Uh, we got to vote the right way when we're in a, we're in a position to vote for infrastructure. We need to help other counties, new Jasper and Clark. Again, uh, we, got, we have we fall to seventh again in the 50 states of teacher pay rates. We got state employees that's been working for the state, most of them over 10 years, not just teachers, it's state employees, and haven't got a, a dime raise. You know, that's a problem. You know, we got to think out the box to get these people fair pay. I mean, you know, it, it is what it is. And last and uh, but not least is economic growth. You know, economic development is a big deal. Uh, we got to do what we can. Uh, we got three main suppliers right here in Clark County. Uh, we got a school system. We got DART, and we got all field workers. Other than that, uh, you got to go outside the county limit uh, to get a job. Uh, we got to help other counties and do what we can to get jobs and for them to get good jobs. I vote for the working man and woman in Clark County. And August the August the sixth, I'll do everything I can for the working man and woman.